Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad, and this is another bankless tutorial. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Dharma wallet to beat the high gas prices and trade with Uniswap thanks to the subsidized fees uh, provided by the Dharma team. So trading fees and gas fees are essentially being subsidized. Uh, the rates can vary just because uh, Dharma is trying to account for slippage to ensure that trades go through. And so the rate that you pay is often a little bit higher than what you would pay on Uniswap. But end of day, there's huge net savings in using the Dharma wallet with Uniswap. So I'm gonna show you how to trade from Ether to another ERC-20 token like Lend. I'm gonna show you how to trade from an ERC-20 token to Ether. I also have the option of trading from DAI to another ERC-20 token or Ether, or I can trade from another ERC-20 token back to DAI or Ether. You will soon be able to do trades like this where I, I go from an ERC-20 token to ERC-20 token, but for right now, it's not available. It's just because the Dharma team is working to ensure that uh, they can properly represent all of the rates and ensure that these trades go through even when gas prices are sky high. In order for me to take advantage of these subsidized gas and trading fees on Uniswap using the Dharma wallet, I've got to get money into my Dharma wallet first. So you'll notice there's a deposit button there. If I just click that, this is what enables me to then deposit into my wallet. So that's my public address. It's similar to the email address anyone would use, but it's to enable someone to send money to me uh, in my wallet. So if I have money in my MetaMask wallet, or if I have money in my Argent wallet, uh, I want to copy this address below, which uh, use the little share button and it'll allow you to copy the entire address. You know, if folks are using something like Coinbase or Binance, you can take this address and you can withdraw your money from the exchange, uh, whether it's Ether, DAI, or another ERC-20 token. One last note on this, I want to make sure that I am dealing with an Ethereum-based token. I cannot deposit any token into this wallet. This is only for Ethereum. So that means tokens like Ether, like DAI, like Lend, like SNX, it has to be an Ethereum-based token. And if I'm unsure of that, I need to go do some homework, go to someone like CoinGecko and check to see whether or not this is an Ethereum-based token. Another way for me to get my money into this wallet is to deposit fiat. So I could choose the debit card option if I'm based in the United States. If I'm not, then I don't need to worry about this and I'm strictly going to use the Dharma wallet as a crypto wallet without a fiat on-ramp or off-ramp, at least for now. So if I'm using my debit card here, I could say, let's deposit $10. Now notice that when I deposit money, um, US dollars specifically into my Dharma wallet using my debit card, it is not withdrawable for up to 14 days. It is available for me to trade immediately, which is, I think, a huge convenience to be able to, you know, use that money immediately to trade from DAI into one of the other ERC-20 tokens or even into Ether. And best of all, I don't pay any fees to deposit my fiat. The third way for me to get money into my Dharma wallet is starting with a centralized exchange. So this is traditionally, I think, where many of us deposit fiat to convert into something like Ether or DAI or USDC or some other uh, Ethereum-based token. So I'm gonna use Coinbase as an example. I'm gonna choose portfolio and then I'll click on USD coin. Although USDC has lots of drawbacks to consider, namely the fact that it is a uh, stable coin with centralized risk, uh, that allows uh, the team that backs USDC to uh, go in and freeze USDC in, in an Ethereum wallet. Although that is reality, I also recognize that it's a very liquid stable coin and it's redeemable for a dollar with Coinbase. So this is a really common on-ramp and off-ramp to get fiat into the system as an ERC-20 token and then send that to an Ethereum wallet 
and then be able to trade into other tokens that don't have that centralized risk. So I'm gonna use this as an example. I could otherwise buy something like Ether or DAI. What I can do here then is buy USDC with dollars. And what I wanna be mindful of is many people will go to Coinbase and they'll buy with a debit card or a bank account. And you'll notice you end up paying fees and these fees can really add up. I mean, three or four dollars might not be a lot to someone, but it's the point of paying that percentage away. Even on a thousand dollars, you're gonna end up paying a lot more money, $38 on a thousand dollars. So the trick to this is you don't buy uh, with a debit card. And that way I will just get $1,000 of USDC and I won't have to pay the same fees. And then send that USDC onto my Ethereum wallets. Another way to get to USDC is if you have a Coinbase account, you have access to their uh, Coinbase Pro. And once you get there, if you click on portfolio, deposit, you have this option then of going uh, and depositing fiat directly into your account. So if you do that, you would then deposit, let's say in my case, US dollars from a bank account. Once those uh, US dollars hit my bank account after let's say three to five days, then I can actually convert that to USDC. So you notice I'm starting with USD here. I think I have like six cents in this account. And then I can convert it to USDC. And you can go backwards as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. I think uh, this is, again, one of the reasons that USDC is a popular stable coin, despite the you know, huge drawbacks to it and the centralized risk that I think everyone should be mindful of and actually work to avoid. So let's assume that I've deposited fiat into my Coinbase or other exchange account. And then let's also assume that I've either bought USDC or I've converted USDC uh, using Coinbase Pro, that converter that's in the portfolio tools. And now I've got USDC. Now I can click on send, which is available in Coinbase Pro or in uh, this more like retail friendly version of Coinbase. And I can then choose to send USDC. There we go. Let's pretend I'm sending 100 of this. Where am I going to send that? I'm gonna send it to the zero X address that is in my Dharma wallet. Just like any other Ethereum wallet, that is the public Ethereum wallet address, the zero X, whatever the heck the rest of it is. Uh, that's what I'm gonna to use to send my USDC. Back to my Dharma wallet, I click deposit, and then it's the zero X five FB number. And so I can copy that, and then I can go ahead and paste that into uh, my Coinbase account to make sure that I'm sending that USDC to this Dharma wallet. So we'll go ahead and paste in that address and we're good to go there. I don't need a note here. This is just something that's convenient. And then I would go ahead and hit send. Uh, one thing I'm not showing here just because I don't really use Coinbase anymore is uh, when you do hit send, if you have actual money in your account, it'll take you to a preview screen and then it'll show you whether or not this address is real. It normally shows like a little green check mark. Look for that, make sure that uh, this is a legit address because it's very possible that someone could uh, copy that address and then let's say that they delete a digit or let's pretend that they just copy the wrong address that isn't a real address. You just wanna be really, really careful so that once I paste that in, I want to check uh, the first several you know, letters and numbers and those at the very end to make sure that I've got the entire address. Whether I have deposited my fiat into DAI using the Dharma wallets deposit options through the debit card or Apple Pay, or I've deposited crypto into my Dharma wallet from something like a Coinbase or another uh, Ethereum wallet, I'm now ready to trade. So I can uh, confirm any of those incoming deposits or transactions by clicking over to the right here. And you can see a history of my transactions. 
So here's me depositing $10 earlier. And then if I scroll to the left, or I could just click here at the very bottom of the screen on the like the little arrows that represent an exchange. This is where I can do my Uniswap trading. Using the current version of the Dharma wallet, I have a few options in terms of how I trade. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it here and start with DAI. I can trade between DAI and any ERC20 token. I can trade between Ether and any ERC20 token, including DAI. And then I can trade the reverse of that. I could start with an ERC20 token, but I can only trade into Ether or DAI. This is a limitation for now, while this is still a rather new product and they're trying to ensure that all of these trades can be executed with the right amount of gas and that they're uh, showcasing the correct uh, swap rates from Uniswap. Another thing to be mindful of is notice that it says die under Dharma verified and then under that it says unverified. I would be very cautious to use any token that is not Dharma verified. There are lots of fake tokens that are being listed on Uniswap. That's because it's permissionless to list a token. If I go and create a fake token called the DeFi Dad Die, I can go on and then list it in Uniswap just by providing uh, that liquidity. So let's go ahead and do a trade. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, the Die tokens that I have. And I'm going to trade these for, I mean, I could go to ETH. But just to kind of showcase the power of being able to trade from DAI or Ether into another ERC20 token, let's choose something else. So we'll do LEND. By the way, notice that I've got the ETH LEND token, uh, and then what's spelled similarly is the Tendies token. But I'm going to choose the ETH LEND token. And then let's go ahead and trade 10 die for some uh, lend. So now I'm going to preview the swap. Oh, and there you go. So trade amount minimum is $20. All right, just learned something. Probably has something to do with the amount of gas it takes just to push through a transaction. And then let's go and hit preview swap. So you can see that I'm going to pay 20 die for about 52.3 lend. And I'm going to uh, not pay any gas or trading fees. But the conversion rate is 2.617 lend per die. Let's go check on Uniswap what the difference is. So it looks like for 20 die, I'm going to get 53.58 lend versus the now 52.46 lend on the Dharma wallet. So there is a small difference, but I would argue that the gas that I would pay for this transaction is probably about $10 minimally. So that's a lot of money um, saved when I'm using the Dharma wallet. Just be mindful that what I showed you a few minutes ago has already changed because uh, the pricing in these pools is dynamic and it, they're constantly changing in Uniswap. Here's what I'm saving on. I'm not paying that exorbitant gas fee that I'm going to pay while the gas price today is around 150 guay. I'm not paying a trading fee to Dharma. And I normally would have to work through two transactions with Uniswap. In Dharma, I'm just going to click the confirm button. It's a single uh, click transaction. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, so my trade went through, awesome. And uh, I think the key takeaway here is I didn't pay those exorbitant gas and trading fees. I mean, I easily saved at least 10 to $15 in gas, which is insane to pay those gas fees to do small trades like this. Um, I recognize that one of the solutions right now to these high gas prices is that if you aren't trading a larger position and your gas is going to cost that much of a percentage of your uh, swap, you probably shouldn't be doing the swap. That's not the answer though that most want to hear. And I think a lot about newcomers to DeFi. So this is a really easy way to get around these high gas prices. So if we go back to the swap, you can see now that I have 29 die available. So I'm down 20 die from where I started at 59 die. And if we were to uh, 
go and flip that, I now have 51 Len that I could trade back to DAI or I could trade that to something like Ether. And then if I hit preview, it'll show me what the trade will look like. So that's all there is to it. Uh, that's how Dharma is saving me lots of money in terms of fees. And I would encourage anyone to check it out. There's no reason to be paying high gas prices uh, when there are other ways around that with trading. All right, so just a few risks to call out. Uh, first off, if you use the Dharma wallet, and if you use the deposit option with a debit or Apple Pay, you're going to end up giving up some you know, personal information. Normally, I just use products where I don't have to give up any sort of information like MetaMask. However, uh, getting fiat into the system, no matter whether you go through a centralized exchange or through a DeFi product that has a fiat on-ramp, uh, there's no way around it, at least for me in the United States. So this is a great product for me to be able to easily deposit uh, you know, as much money as I need and be able to do it for free. The second risk is just making a mistake sending crypto, namely an Ethereum token, to my wallet and screwing up this 0x address. I want to be really careful that I copy that by using the share option there and copying that very long hexadecimal address. If I leave just one letter or number out, my funds are lost forever. Another human error that could occur with this is sending a non-Ethereum token to the Dharma wallet. If I try to withdraw my money from an exchange and it's a non-Ethereum token like the Binance token, or if you use a, a wallet like the Trust wallet or Coinbase wallet, uh, they both support Ethereum tokens, but they also have other tokens that are on other blockchains. And I just want to make sure that I don't send something like Bitcoin or something like the Binance token or any of the other non-Ethereum tokens. Another major risk that I think about is loss of my account. So this could happen by uninstalling a browser, deleting my browser's data, or losing a device like my phone or my laptop. And so the way to get around this is I want to add a new device, which is something like an iPhone or whatever phone you use or something in the Chrome browser. So the way I would do that is I click add new device. And I'm not going to show you it because otherwise it would expose my own wallet, but you get the idea. Uh, this is one of the few ways that you can really protect yourself. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you find this helpful. Let us know if you have any questions in the YouTube comments or on Twitter. You can also reach us in the Bankless Discord group. And otherwise, I will see you next time.